Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the books and resources we are using for our physics main lesson block. Now I've divided our physics main lesson block into five categories and today I want to share with you the materials that we're using for our mechanics main lesson block. Now I have a number of resources and picture books to share with you today but I also have some books that we have been using throughout all of our main lesson blocks for physics. I'm going to share with you those ones at the end of the video. The first books I want to share with you are picture books and I love adding picture books into our main lesson blocks because I'm generally teaching multiple ages and multiple grades and I like having something that appeals to the younger students who may not be involved in the rest of the lessons or at least may not be doing some of the other work involved because it is above their grade level or above their capabilities and also I like adding picture books into our main lesson blocks because I find them to be an undervalued and overlooked resource I find them to be really well written nicely illustrated captivating and engaging and they tend to bring in uh, information or material that is maybe above what a student can understand and really reduces it in a way that a student can understand it in a simple way but without it being dumbed down and that's what I like about most picture books is that even for adults if you need to re-familiarize yourself with some concepts uh, some math some geometry some physics uh, biographies I find that picture books are a really great way to go now if you're doing a more authentic approach to your Waldorf main lesson block then the picture books that I'm sharing with you will be resources that you use as a parent or a teacher to learn the story, to read it ahead of time, and then present that story orally to your students rather than with a picture book. Since we're in a homeschool environment, having my children or my students sit next to me and look at a picture book usually is fine as I read it aloud. And I'll tell you, often they're usually engaged in something else while I'm reading the picture books. But that is why I do include a lot of picture books into our main lesson block. So this one is called How Emily Saved the Bridge. This is a story of Emily Roebling and the building of the, Br building of the Brooklyn Bridge. And what I love about this story is that you have, well, especially at the time, you have women who are engineers and scientists and mathematicians, and they're not being recognized for their skill, or they're not even being allowed in, uh, allowed to be admitted into higher education, or at least if they are, it's such a struggle and there are very few of them. So in addition to this being just a brilliant story about engineering, it's also about the perseverance of women and females in in science and mathematics. And it, I know that for our young children, it, it may be something that is astonishing for them to think that there was a time in the recent history where women weren't valued for their abilities in math, science, and other technical, uh, other, other technical fields. And so having these things, having these kinds of books is really important to me because it also allows my children to see positive role models and what can be achieved through perseverance. I also have Rosie Revere Engineer. This is a fictitious book. Uh, when I was buying a lot of these books on female scientists and uh, role, role models and historians and, and, uh, paleontologists and, uh, you know, all different fields. I had picked up this book and I had thought that it was, uh, a real book, but actually it's a fictitious book and that's okay. It's a really, really charming book about a little girl scientist and all of the things that she tries and she fails and that's okay. She keeps working on it until she succeeds. And I think it's a really charming story to add to any unit. And especially for this one, since we're going to be talking about mechanics and buildings and uh, levers and, and types of tools and machines. And so while this is primarily for upper elementary, junior high and high school level for the materials and the projects that I'm sharing with you, a lot of the picture books are intended to appeal to a younger student because I do have a younger student who's going to be participating in these and the picture books really help her stay involved, but maybe not do all of the projects that are intended for my son. Secret Engineer. This is a, this is similar to How Emily Saved the Bridge. This is another biography about Emily. And I will take as many biographies, picture books about, uh, uh, about any scientist, about any person who's made a difference, but especially for women. So even though this is the same kind of book, this happens often in our homeschool, well, where I will have multiple books about the same person. They're just different picture books or even chapter books, but I will, I will include them because I find them to be really valuable resources. 
So the next uh, biography I have is, uh, is Who Was Isaac Newton? And I really like the Who Was series. I find them to be really well written in a very simple way with some nice black and white illustrations. They look like just pencil drawings. And these ones are really great read-alouds, but often I find that I don't have enough time to read these books. And so I'll end up assigning these books to my students and then I'll read the picture books or other material that I want to read aloud. Then we have more time to, to read those. And then this offers my students something that's, I'm going to call busy work in a way, because it's something that they can do on their own while I'm maybe teaching another student or setting up a project or just taking a break in the school day at least they have something that they can be engaged in so this is who was Isaac Newton I also have simple machines the way they work physics book for kids uh, children's physics book well there's a lot of titles for that one and <laughs> baby professor so I really liked the cover of this book. I like the title. I'm like, this will be just right for our, you know, understanding machines and tools and those kinds of things. But the book itself at first didn't really appeal to me. It's, it's not really the kind of book that I would go for. It seems kind of simple and really directed towards a really young student. However, I feel like the concepts in here are more upper elementary and even higher, especially since we're actually going to be working with these uh, these tools, these machines as part of our physics unit, I feel like the concepts are really intended for an older student, but the book is written and just the the, the illustrations, the whole feel of the book is for a younger student. So I'm not, I don't really care for, for that because I feel like these kinds of concepts, they're not intended for really young children. Young children should be on the slide or in the playground experiencing these things without having the words to describe them. Right now, their, their greatest tool of discovery and education is through experience, then later you can call back that experience in a lesson where you're adding in the words and then event eventually you're adding in the math concepts behind it. However, I have to say that I was super pleased with this book in the end because of its simplicity, because of the way that it explains things, because of the illustrations, it made it really easy for us to recreate these projects and experience them for ourselves in our homeschool. So I have a video course on my website at pepperandpine.com that has dozens and dozens of video tutorials and demonstrations using all of the materials that we have for our physics main lesson blocks or all of our sub uh, subunits within our physics main lesson blocks. And so if you want to see all of the projects and demonstrations and tutorials on how to do them, that is all on my website. And that link is down in the description box below. So we have another book on simple machines. It's the You Wouldn't Want to Live Without Simple Machines. And I really like this series by Scholastics as well. They have a kind of a, a whimsical approach to the information. The illustrations are a little bit silly. Sometimes the captions are a little bit silly as well. For this book, they weren't quite as silly as some of the other history books that we've read. But I like this book a lot because, again, it brings the concept that we're trying to understand in a simple way. And what I mean by that is that it usually eliminates a lot of the complex math that goes along with these uh, physics fundamentals, and it brings in just the experience or the, I guess, the practical side so that you can understand it without having to work through a lot of math. So I really appreciate this book for doing that because then we can go and recreate these projects like we did our own pulley system we did type one type two and type three levers we were able to recreate those projects without having to worry about the math but still understanding the concept so we really enjoyed this book and we drew experiments projects demonstrations from all of the books that we are bringing together for our physics units but especially from the curriculum that we have which i will show you at the end so we also have some hands-on projects for this unit, and we have a number of kits that come with all the materials that we need in order to work with simple machines and pulleys and uh, structural engineering. And I really, really appreciate these kinds of kits because it has everything you need in order to do these projects so your child can get to the education and, and the experience without you having to search for these things. However, I don't always use kits. I do sometimes source my own things, put together my own kits. But what I like about having these kits is that 
it saves me a lot of time so that I can focus on bringing these things to our homeschool or focusing on other hands-on projects that we can do because I do like to fill our units with a lot of hands-on projects and activities because I feel like that's not just a memorable experience for them, but also a, a highly educational experience for them. So this one is called Structural Engineering Bridges and Landscapes, and it comes with tons of materials in order for you to build these different bridges. And of course, it comes with some instructions on how to build everything. The next kit I want to show you also by the same manufacturer is called Simple Machines. And this one is going to just go over uh, simple machines, so pulleys and levers, screws, wedges, incline planes. Uh, you also have gears and wheels and axles. And I really, really like this because this fits just right with this particular unit. And it's going to give us the opportunity to try all of these things out in a small scale rather than in a larger scale, which we have done. We have done our pulleys out in the tree in the front yard. We have done our various levers using materials in our homeschool. And what's great about doing them full size is that you really get a feel for them and how different it is to use these machines in order to help you move move things, move mass from one place to another or move it vertically or horizontally. So it is great to do them life-size, but also if you can't or you just don't have the materials, something like this is going to be really wonderful because you can then experience all of them on a small scale. The last kit I want to show you is by Learning Resources, and this one's called Simple Machines. And this is a kit that we've had in our homeschool for probably over 10 years, probably 12 years. And we have really, really enjoyed it. So it comes with a lot of really sturdy materials in order for you to try these different simple machines, as well as information on how to do them. And my children have made and explored simple machines for years without recognizing that this was going to be part of our physics unit later on. So this is something that's really great that you can add to your homeschool or into your classroom before you actually go into the main lesson on it or into the math on it is that you can have these materials available for the children to play with. Because after all, when they're going to the park and they're sliding down uh, a slide or they're on a swing or they're on the merry-go-round or they're playing with some of those diggers that you have in the sand, all of that is their experience with physics without recognizing that that is going to be something that they're going to talk about and learn about later on. So same with some of these other kits and toys is that when you have them in your homeschool space, when the kids are engaging with them, later on, it's going to be an opportunity to call back and they'll have a reference for these things. When you're talking about moving things in a wheelbarrow and pulleys, if they've done that when they were younger, then they can have an actual experience to call back on when you're going through something that's a little bit abstract in the form of a wordy lesson. If they don't have an experience to go with it, at least they can remember the ones that they had when they were younger. Before I dive into our materials that we've been using for all of our physics lessons, I want to share with you one more thing. And these are pulleys and ropes that we picked up from the hardware store. There are different grades and strengths of pulleys. So if you intend to use these you know, over and over again, then I would say go for the ones that you'd find at the hardware store rather than the ones that you might find in some of these toy kits because they're just not going to be strong enough. And if you want to experience it, I feel like using something that's going to be a little bit on the heavier side really gives you a feel of how the pulleys are doing the work for you or at least reducing the amount of effort you have to do in order to move an object vertically. And so I would, or even horizontally, but we used a tree, so we were moving our load horizontally. So do get some really good quality ones because we had ones that weren't that great and they were too small and they couldn't even run the rope through them. So we have some thin rope, we have some pulleys. We were able to experience this and it was really phenomenal to actually experience the difference with and without the pulley. Okay, so I've got some books I wanna share with you, but first, let me clear some space so that I can share with you these last materials. These last materials are, oh goodness, I forgot one more actually. 
It was hiding all the way over here in the corner. This book is called Bridges. It's Amazing Structures to Design, Build, and Test. And when we got this book, I can't remember if it came with the kit and we already used the kit or it was a standalone book. But this would be a great resource if you didn't want to buy a kit. You could use this book with some simple materials that you could add to it so that you can build your own bridges. Some things are super simple. You don't need much more than maybe popsicle sticks and glue. And then you can try out different types of bridges. So this would be a great addition to this particular main lesson block. Okay, so on to our resources that we have been using for all of these physics main lesson blocks. We have our DKI Witness books. This is for physics. This is a book that I use mainly as a reference for myself. Also, if you were looking to make your own main lesson block or your own unit study on physics, I would say that this would be a really great resource as your spine for your unit study so that you could draw on different subject areas to create your main lesson block or your unit study. So this would be a really great resource because it has all of the topics that you can go through and you don't have to choose all of them, but at least it gives you a nice overview of what you should be covering in your physics main lesson block or not what you should, but what you can cover. And then you can find projects and other books to support each of these different topic areas. We also have Physics the Waldorf Way Grade 8, Grade 7, and Grade 6. This is by Roberto Trosley, and I love this series of books. It is so well done. If you wanted to also put together your own main lesson block in physics, I would say these three resources would be a great beginning for you. You could add in other resources for yourself to tell the stories, or you would just need your main lesson book and some additional materials in order to put together a more authentic Waldorf approach for your physics main lesson block. If you're just doing a physics unit study, it really, it doesn't matter. These, the, these resources are going to be great for your demonstrations and for your examples. But if you wanted to do something that was a little bit more Waldorf inspired, this book is going to give you some great resources at the beginning of the book to explain how a physics main lesson uh, progresses, you know, what parts make up the main lesson, uh, how to do the demonstration, how to recall the information the next day. And what parts of your, um, I guess, different faculties are being called on for each of the different parts of your main lesson. So this is the beginning parts are really for the Waldorf enthusiast who wants to bring that element to the lessons. We also have our Waldorf curriculum from live education for grade six and for grade seven. Grade six is going to go through heat, light, and sound, an introduction to physics. This is a really beautifully done curriculum. It's a great introduction for your physics main lesson block. It's a very easy, gentle introduction. And you do need a few materials, but overall you can do a lot of this with things that you can make on your own at home. Then it goes into a little bit more depth for the second year of physics for grade seven. This is electricity, magnetism, mechanics, acoustics, and optics. And again, it's a really nicely done curriculum with also a lot of illustrations that could be the, potentially the illustrations that the student adds into their main lesson book. So it's nice to see some examples of what might go into a main lesson book. All right, I think that covers all of the materials that we have for our mechanics main lesson block in physics. Don't forget to check the blog post that accompanies this video for more information and details on the materials that we've used. That link is down in the description box below. I also have a physics series, a video series on my website. You can check that out as well if you want to see the projects and demonstrations that we've done. And if you want to see how our homeschool is progressing on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.